Next up, Siobhan Huggins is a research specialist at the Lipedema Project, advocating ketogenic diets and nutritional therapy based on her personal experience with lipedema herself. Please welcome my very good friend and colleague and business partner in Own Your Labs, Siobhan Huggins. Okay, so for this talk, I wanted to discuss a little bit about a group project that we had done in collaboration with the Lipedema Project, Lipedema Simplified, and American Ketone. And this was to look at the impact of exogenous ketones on lipedema symptoms. First off, disclosures. The main one that I wanna highlight is that American Ketone did provide all product at zero cost for this project, so I wanted to thank them for that. Next, a lot of you may not know what lipedema is, and now you're going to. <laughs> so, lipedema is a fat and lymphatic disorder that occurs almost exclusively in women. It causes disproportionate symmetrical deposition of fat, so that means down both sides of the body about the same amount, assuming no other comorbidities. It can also result in non-pitting edema, easy bruising, hypersensitivity and pain, all in those lipedema areas. And that pain aspect results in it sometimes being called a painful fat disorder. And this isn't just, oh, they have a little bit of pain. This can be excruciating, devastating, life-altering levels of pain. So we want to approach with as many possibilities of management tools that we possibly can for these people. I'm one of them, by the way. <laughs> um, it can also result in skin and tissue changes. You can see ankle cuffing here. Um, and then characteristically, there's a limited or no response to typical weight loss methods like calorie restriction. It's a little bit different with ketogenic diets, but not typically full normalization of the tissue. Overview of the project. Um, so the whole reason we wanted to look into this was because we had seen anecdotes from our community, that first abject um, aspect of observation of people using exogenous ketones and noting reductions in lipedema-related pain. And another really important aspect is that there is existing research looking at using ketogenic diets for lipedema, and one of the most common things that it does is it reduces pain levels. So how much of that is from metabolic health restoration? How much is from ketone exposure? We don't know. So in terms of the participants, it was six women with lipedema. Um, most of them were officially diagnosed, and they were all from our Wisdom Circles subcommunity. They each agreed to take 10 grams of ketones or BHB, I'll use those interchangeably, for 21 days. Um, some, after the first week, also added five grams an hour before bed, either to just increase their dose if they felt that was correct for them, or to look at impacts on sleep. There were four meetings in total, orientation, where we gave kind of the overview, two check-ins, and a final checkout where they summarized their experience. And then uh, during those check-ins, we did get their general thoughts on what was going on, which is a lot of what I'll be focusing on verbally. I have more on the slides. Um, and then we also did track changes in fatigue, depression, cognition, pain, and measurements at baseline and checkout. Um, so we've got some of that too. In terms of the product, like I mentioned, American Ketone donated project, uh, product. And this is a bioidentical D-beta-hydroxybutyrate. Um, so it is the same form of ketones produced by the body, um, not like a salt or ester or alcohol or anything like that. It was provided in the form of a liquid concentrate, which they diluted with water. And I have a bunch of reasons why we decided on this product. But like I mentioned, lipedema is also, it impacts lymphatics and things like MCT relies on that to distribute it in the body. Um, we also didn't want to rely on liver or stomach processing and with the bioidenticals, they are more immediately available. So that was interesting. And then both Catherine Sayo, the CEO and founder of the Lipedema Project, and I had both tried the product individually and we found it generally palatable, no weird aftertaste. So we thought it possible um, that people would be interested in um, taking it for 21 days. So this is a first look at the project results. You guys get the sneak peek. We haven't discussed it with anybody else outside the team. Um, so I've decided to present this individually, case by case, because it is such a small um, participant size. And the individual stories, I think, are the most compelling here. 
So number one, uh, participant BW, not her real initials. Um, you can see the demographics here. Um, you can see she was already on a ketogenic diet, which is kind of interesting. She did have pain at baseline. You can see that she did see reductions in pain and fatigue as well, especially post-travel fatigue. But one interesting thing <laughs> that we're still baffled by is that one hour, like within one hour of taking the dose, she reliably became ravenously hungry. And usually with exogenous ketones, we hear about appetite reduction. Well, this participant ended up speaking to our nutritionist on staff at Lipidema Simplified, Carrie Reedy, and she suggested, why don't you just eat <laughs> when you're hungry and see what happens? So she did. Um, so she ended up actually increasing the fat in her diet as well because she found that induced satiation, she could get through the rest of the day just fine. And you might think that with the increased appetite, maybe she gained weight, her measurements went up, but no, her measurements actually reduced an inch at the waist and the hip, so a proportional loss, which with lipedema is unusual, <laughs> not impossible, but interesting. Um, and this one we're still talking about and thinking about, and we're trying to figure out how to explore this more. We didn't expect it. Um, CR here, very similar demographics, but um, not really any particular diet, but she does regularly l use intermittent fasting. Um, she did also see pain reduction, reduced brain fog, reduced fatigue, and she said that her clothes were fitting looser, so that's interesting. Um, but the aspect that I wanted to highlight with her is that she talked about how she drives for work and during this um, experiment, she ended up driving more than usual and usually her legs ache. And what she noticed is that when she was taking the exogenous ketones, she didn't notice her legs when she was driving because they didn't ache anymore. And if you have lipedema or know someone who does, when you don't notice your legs, <laughs> that is awesome. So that was very cool to hear. HB here, again, similar demographics, low carb um, this time around. She had some of the most pronounced pain relief. She was scoring like six to eight on some of the pain response surveys and they came down to zero to one using the exogenous ketones. Again, <laughs> I didn't expect that level. I don't think anybody of us did, but we're definitely gonna talk about it. Um, she also had some life events going on, um, including some increased carbohydrate intake. And normally, she said when that happens, her pain increases, but when taking the exogenous ketones, they did not. It wasn't all positive for her, and I wanna make sure to highlight her experience here, which is she described herself as a super taster. Um, so she said that stevia tastes very bitter to her, so she didn't particularly super enjoy <laughs> the taste of the product, but she decided to continue with it anyway. Um, so that's worth highlighting too. Um, one other thing with her is that she noticed a 1.9 inch measurement reduction in her right knee only, nowhere else. Um, she did measure multiple times to confirm because she also found it a little bit weird. Um, we don't know why that is. We didn't have body composition scans or anything, but I'll mention it here in case anybody has ideas. Four, um, similar again, but no pain at baseline for her. She's on a carnivore diet. Um, so obviously that didn't change, didn't get worse. There was nothing to improve on. Um, she wanted to participate in this project for brain fog and fatigue. Um, and I was having a conversation last night talking about how difficult fatigue is to observe because a lot of people don't know that they're fatigued. And one thing that she noticed is that she could have a full day of errands and still have energy at the end of the day. So maybe that's a question we could ask. Can you have a full day of errands and you have energy at the end? If the answer is no, maybe you have a little bit of fatigue. But she did see that improve. And just imagine the quality of life impact of that, of being able to get through your day and at the end you're not exhausted. Um, and she did also see some reduced measurements as well. I've combined these two, PC and BT, because we actually have incomplete data on them, um, but I wanted to make sure they were included. Um, so PC, very similar demographics again, already on a ketogenic diet. The difference with her, which I think is worth pointing out, is that she does have lymphedema from birth, so a lymphatic disorder from birth, including impacts on the central lymphatics. Um, 
which does a whole bunch of stuff that's a whole other talk. <laughs> um, but basically what happened is she took the product for nine days and ended up vomiting. She immediately withdrew, which we highly encourage doing. Um, but she did mention that she is prone to vomiting um, from certain medications, supplements, sometimes even food. So she didn't note it as unusual, but for safety reasons, we did go ahead and have her drop out. Um, and then BT, the only reason that she's incomplete is actually because the product arrived late due to customs issues. So she's overseas, it was delayed by a lot, and she started taking the product shortly before the last check-in. But she did report in at that point, and she did note a large reduction in lipedema-related pain. The relief in her voice when she talked about it is still in my head. Um, and we have done follow-up checks with her and are continuing to do so, and it seems like that pain relief is sticking with her, and she's also noting improved energy as well. So there are, of course, limitations. Um, this isn't a formal study, obviously. This is a bunch of patients getting together and seeing what we can learn. Um, everything was self-reported through self-administered surveys and group check-ins. Um, many participants were already on a low-carbon ketogenic diet. We tend to emphasize ketogenic diets because there's such strong evidence for them with lipedema, so that kind of skews our population. It means we have limited data on those who aren't low-carb, um, but it also means that people who are low-carb may still benefit if this holds out in larger um, group sizes, so that's still interesting. Um, it was mostly older women, everybody was over 50, so younger participants with lipedema I'd love to look at. Um, some participants did change their diet due to effects from the product or other life events. We did request that they try to stick on the same diet, but these are real people, not lab rats, so stuff happens. Um, and then it was only three weeks. It's unclear if results will persist with longer term use. However, um, we are following up with at least two participants to have them continue taking the product over a longer period of time and see what sticks, what changes, what dissipates, because I think that's an important question. In terms of the takeaways, definitely um, the most notable was the pain reduction. Four out of six people, and one of those six didn't even have pain in the beginning, so more like four out of five. Um, the participants did notice reductions in measurements, but again, some of them changed their diet. One increased fat intake um, due to the increased hunger, so maybe that caused weight loss for some reason. One commented on more station at mealtimes, maybe she was eating less, and one only saw measurement reductions in one area. Um, those, I think this is important to emphasize, but those with a sensitivity to the bitter taste of stevia might not enjoy it, so if you're considering it, maybe take that in as well. Um, reductions in fatigue and brain fog, about half of the people. Um, further follow-up in those with central lymphatic issues. It's kind of neglected already, um, but to see if this is like a common response or just a one-off with this person, either way, important to look at. Um, the final, final, final <laughs> takeaway is exogenous ketones may actually be worthy of further investigation, particularly for lipedema-related pain, and this is one of those symptoms that impacts quality of life very severely, so we want as many tools as possible to help people manage this, um, and we talk about a bunch of different ways um, through uh, Lipedema Project and Lipedema Simplified. Also, a formal study would be nice. Um, also, uh, citizen science is cool and useful. With lipedema, there's 10 billion things that you could try, so trying to investigate which you should try sooner than others can be really helpful for people trying to navigate. One last important emphasis is that going into this project and coming out of it, we were not looking to replace nutritional intervention. We were more so looking at adjuncts to nutritional therapies, um, including ketogenic diets, so maybe it could add a benefit on top. Um, for acute flare-ups and symptoms, and when first starting towards working on bettering nutrition um, before, you know, you get those pain relief benefits. Thank you.